Let's do some questions. This ought to be good. Hi, how's it going? Hmm. Ah, Dave, that's a great question. Dave has the question of the day. One moon. At this point, at this point, I'll just take just a small low orbit atmosphere, quite honestly. That'd be good. Let me put on my nerd glasses. The glasses aren't for to help me see. It's to, to stop me from getting headaches. I, I'm on my computer like all the time. <laughs> ah, let it rip them. Now, this is a great question. <laughs> Cubby tie. Just call the DCA and, and don't let Ben know. Ben, look, Ben's a smart guy. James is a smart guy. They're both really smart guys. And uh, they have their theories about what's what's happening and, and which way they want to do it. Actually, the last DCA, me and Ben said that we we had too much risk. And James said, I didn't have enough risk. So there's all these different philosophies. But I think the outcome the outcome is, is, of course, gains. The question is how many and how much and the percentage of gains. That's the big thing. So for me, I just try to be a little bit more conservative. And that's what I do. So this is probably not it. So whatever. Yeah. Yes, Dan does the news, Rob does the Q&A. Yeah, so like reverse Superman. I put the glasses back on. Uh, Money says, Rob, I don't have a question. I just want to thank you for sharing. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, disagreeing is okay. Uh, Kirk says, hello from South America. Do you feel we're going into crypto winter? Sure feels like it, doesn't it? Feels like It almost feels like 2018, but... Not really, because in 2018, we went from 20 to 5,000, so we're like a 75% drop. So 69 to, to 30, well, it's getting, it's not 75%, but it's getting close to it. So we'll see. Oh, that's a great question. So P. Kelly says, Rob, when I trust capital staking. Fantastic question. And it's something that I am going to address with them when I go to consensus in Austin in two weeks. So if you're in the Austin area, just stop by. Uh, we're going to do uh, like a meet and greet with iTrust uh, someplace. I don't know. But I, that's the big question. You can bombard them with that same question because I'm going to do the same thing. Damn, I'd really like to have staking in my, in my Roth IRA. Because imagine this. You stake your, your uh, Cardano or your Ethereum. I think they have Solana now. I'm not for sure. You stake it. The rewards that you get just go into your Roth IRA. and There's no tax on it. Zip, zilch, nothing. That would be pretty smooth. But I don't know when, because I've already asked them personally. They're like, hey, Q3? Yes, exactly. I do look like the near one casino. So I'm not as, not as robust as that guy was. Question, when bottom? Nobody knows. We can make some pretty good guesses, but who knows? I think um, this is the this is the the real beauty of uh, of dollar cost averaging, but um, you got to be aware. Like, let me show you something. So, here's my favorite example. First of all. XRP would have done a heck of a lot better if it wasn't for the SEC. They really screwed them. All right. So this is Cardano. And, uh, you know, I remember buying, I remember buying Cardano at 74 cents and I'm around a dollar. I can't remember. And then I bought it for like, it wasn't 60, it was like 30 some cents. I thought it was a genius. And it just kept going down and down and down. But the thing was, is that uh, I was buying... I was buying like, at first I was buying every day. And then as things went crazy, I started to buy every week because I didn't know. And I started to really figure out about DCAing. And I started to buy every two weeks. And I just kept it like that. So it didn't hit rock, rock bottom. January, February, March. Well, this was 16 cents. I don't remember. I, I remember stopping because I kind of got so ticked off. And then I remember buying at around seven, six, seven cents somewhere around there. Yeah, around here. So after the summer, no, I remember buying it at nine cents. So yeah, so like the, the so the thing was you can keep buying here and your cost basis will keep going down. The thing is, is that you know, how do you have this in you to do this? 
I mean, I did because I thought it was uh, now. And remember, I'm not, I didn't dollar cost average every single day or every single week. There was times I'd shut it off. I'm like, I just don't, don't believe in this. And then I would come back and there'd be some kind of update and we would talk about it and okay, I can see it. And I go from here and then you just kind of see what's happened in the ecosystem. And then you just kind of hold on and go, well, I'm not going to sell because I think it's going to do pretty well. And then it did, you know, you had this and you had this and, and off you go. So imagine all this time to dollar cost average. It's the same thing with Bitcoin. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, Bitcoin, these are the, the sweet thing of, of Bitcoin was, was buying around here. And remember, if you can see this at this $600, it's all, it looks flat, right? But remember when it was like 10 bucks, 600 bucks looked ridiculous, ridiculous. And then of course, this is 2017. It doesn't look paltry and goofy, but that was the big time, baby. And then of course, now we're all over here. So it just depends on, on, on how long you want to be here. I don't think you can make it overnight. Maybe, I don't know. All right. Now yeah, let's see what else we got. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm here for the long term as long as the funds allow it. Yes, exactly. And that's the thing, right? Because like, here's another great, great thing I always listen to, but it all comes down to you, right? Like if you, if it was me and I didn't have a lot of, different revenue coming in, this would be a tough gambit to say, well, I want to spend, you know, 30,000 a month on crypto or whatever. That'd be very difficult. Let's be honest, or 20,000 or 10,000 or 5,000 or a thousand, whatever else. So really it's like, well, how much do I have to invest? And am I okay with it going down to 90% or losing everything? Cause you're only supposed to invest what you can afford to lose. Right? So if, if that's the truth, then, and you say, well, I've got a, I got a five, I got a three, I got a, a two, three, five, and 10 year horizon. You can probably do get away with a lot more stuff. But if you're like, I need money in six months, that's called a payday loan. And that's, that's highway robbery. But you know, you have to think about where do you want to be? So everybody's different. Like, that's the thing. Like it's, it's hard to talk to every single person because there's so many different people and they're all in different parts of their lives. So I can just tell you what I've done. I want to continue to do. So like, I would not be investing a thousand bucks a day into crypto. That'd be crazy if you make 2000 a month, just saying. Oh, look at that. I'd like to think of, I have not. Uh, and then uh, the pool man, the pool man. I took profit for a while ago. And now I'm writing the free run, love from nowhere. That's great. And that's a, another big, that's another big metric or action that we're going to be talking about a lot, which is in the past when there was some pretty good runs, I would talk about, you know, I would say, Hey, you know, I've been holding for quite some time, maybe hold up longer from now on out. I'm going to remind everybody that if you need to take profits or want to take profits, remember to take those profits. Because it, as, as time goes on, it's really nice to have that fresh powder on the sidelines and you don't feel that stress. So I'll be talking about that a lot. And I'll be taking, I'll be doing a little better job of taking profits. That's right. Yeah. So Minnesota loves you, Roberto. Thanks, Beardy. I appreciate it. Uh, that's a good question. Let me start that. I'll get to you in a second. Damn, everything keeps moving so fast. Ah. Countries are adopting Bitcoin and Yowzer Doinka source. <laughs> that's, that's, a, <laughs> that's funny. That's hundred percent true. Countries are adopting Bitcoin and looking at ways to actually use it. The real question is, I mean, it was a nice boost for El Salvador and for different countries, but in all honesty, I think really what it's going to come down to is, is the people are the people going to adopt it. I know we talk about Bitcoin beach and how great it is, but, there's some data that comes out of it. It's not as, as rosy and fantastic as we'd like it to be. So I just want to see more people adopt it. I think lightning is a pretty good one as far as like payments and uh, is more rails would be nice, but I think what the more important thing is more education. That's me. All right. Yeah. Smart. Sim says I do 30 bucks a day. Great. Why not? Right. Here's another thing. Think about it this way. 
If you were buying 25 bucks of Cardano at a dime every single day, or if you were buying Cardano at a dime at 25 bucks every week, and you put in, let me do some quick math. That's four, that's a hundred bucks. So just kidding. I gotta tell, I gotta say, from now I gotta say I'm just kidding. So I don't want people to be like, that guy's a moron. Because I, people can't get sarcasm for some reason. Okay, so imagine buying $25 and it's a dime and you do that for three years. Not bad, you know, a hundred bucks, 1200 bucks, a 1200 bucks a year, three years straight. Still pretty good. Just saying. All right. Ah, this is a good question. Keith Jones. It's a good name. Good afternoon. 50 K to invest in Bitcoin or property. If there's places where you can buy property for 50,000, just saying, um, land is not a bad option, especially on the different parts of town. I would go to, uh, city hall and take a look at, Ah, what are those damn forms called? Perspective something where they 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 take a look at the different land that's uh, is is up for bid for commercial use and the ones that are on the outskirts of wherever you're at and take a look at uh, the bids that are being placed. If you can see those on some you can't, some you can't, and just go, wow, I think I should go in that area. That's yeah, it's a little bit more more than you want to know. Land is always, in my opinion, a pretty good option if you sit on it for quite some time. And it uh, usually appreciates pretty pretty decently. Um, we've had land on the outs, out out parts of El Paso where we bought it for fifty, and in two years it was uh, like I think we bought one sixty. So I mean, not bad, right? And all you got to do is in it. But remember, this is these are strange times because the property value went up so high, and of course there was super inflation. Honestly, eight eight point five percent. So to answer your question, fifty k in Bitcoin or property. Uh, if it's me, I'm doing the smart thing. And the smart thing is not to, is to diversify and not be like, I'm putting it all in on take your pick or whatever else it is. And we just saw this project, which I'm going to stop talking about, uh, that went to zero and people thought it was going to, you know, 500 bucks in no time. So to do that is just a bad mistake. So diversify. So maybe put a little bit into a little bit into crypto. Maybe if you want to put something into land, or maybe if you have a business, you want to start investing into your business by taking that and putting into whatever upgrades that you can do or marketing. I always like marketing because that's what brings people in. And uh, that's it. Or the best thing is just invest in yourself. But 50K in yourself is a lot of money. No, nah, it's not. That's not true. So to answer your question, diversify. You can't just put it in Bitcoin or property. I would do a little bit of both just to be safe. Ah. <laughs> the bum tents in California greater than 50K. You guys still having a, a problem with homelessness over there? I hear. I just hear that in the news. I can't trust the news though. Tell me if that's true or not. Yeah. 2112 crypto, 50K, diversify it. <laughs> Everyone says diversify so much, yet people still am on. I got to tell you, that thing, that diversification saved me. Uh, I was pretty angry when I had to. I was pretty ticked off that I had to sell a bunch of crypto for the house in, in Puerto Rico because I was like, ah, because we couldn't get a loan because the, the owners didn't want to do a loan. They wanted straight cash. So we had to do straight cash and just worked out. Everything happens for a reason when it's supposed to happen, I guess. So that's a, and diversifying works out great. And that house is now being rented on Airbnb and Verbo. And it does pretty well. See, that's the thing. People don't like living. People don't like having other people live in their house. But for me, it's just a house. Wherever I'm at is home. It doesn't matter to me. I think it's just, I mean, when, when I was in the military, it was just wherever we were at, that's, that's, that's where it was. Didn't matter. <sighs> and RJ, thanks, RJ. There's nothing positive right now. But when there's blood in the streets... You know, I think there's positive. There's positiveness all around us. Just like, uh, and you, people are like, ah, Jim Kramer. But Jim Kramer had a pretty good quote. He said, there's a bull run happening somewhere. He's right. There's always something something going on, even the downturn. It's just a little bit, little bit harder to find, okay? So positive right now, I just, I see so many of these institutions getting in. 
Oh, speaking of which, I'm going to talk to, I talked to somebody on, I can't tell you, forget it. So yeah, nothing. I'll, I'll tell everybody on Saturday. But uh, I mean, I still, I, I see some positivity. Look, it's not like 2017. The roads are, the roads are really built in. In 2017, this stuff, crypto wasn't on, on uh, MSNBC all the time or CNN or, or Fox or wherever else. You didn't have people getting interviewed on these major publications. You didn't have big, huge, I mean, multiple banks uh, getting into it. You didn't have the Federal Reserve uh, actually making statements about it. I mean, Jerome Powell came out, what, six months ago? And, and they asked him point blank in Congress, is it your intention to ban Bitcoin and cryptocurrency? And he said, no, it's not our intention to do, to do that. And of course, he's right because he's the Federal Reserve. He can't ban anything. So, I mean, I think there's, there's good news all around. Now, there's also, there's also bad news. And that's why I try to give up both sides of the story. For every, good, for every light, there's a little bit dark. And that's just how it is. And it's up to you to, to balance that out. Yeah, well, that's nice. Charles says, miners are very interesting and very positive about the space and future. Well, that's true because people keep building Bitcoin miners all over the place, and especially here in Texas. So if you're just looking for like, it'd be like this, like, uh, I don't know, building a, an ice factory in, in uh, Antarctica. No one would do that. We have plenty of ice. We don't need your ice. But uh, so that would be a waste of time, right? So if you're, if you're putting in the infrastructure, millions and tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars for infrastructure to, to build a mining operation in West Texas, which is where a lot of places are coming, and actually Georgia, which is crazy. Um, it's not like they haven't done their, their economic studies to see if this is actually a viable business. They're going full force. So it gives me a little bit of pause to think that that, that could be a positive. Uh, okay, so Chickabow says, Chickabow bow. Do you think cause of the lengthening cycles will be having less gains in the market? Because that is what has been happening since 2013. And that's true. We have seen uh, less as far as like, uh, uh, you know, 100x, 10x, 3x types of gains. Uh, top all coins never did a bull cycle compared to the two other things. So to, first of all, the lengthening cycles, even Ben talks about it. And he says, you know, it's, it's, if we're looking at that, he says it's, it's invalidated at this point it doesn't really make sense of where we're going. We're going back into a bear market, potentially into a crypto winter, and then we go out the other end for another, uh, hopefully parabolic bull run. So lengthening cycles and uh, diminishing, I think the real question is diminishing returns. And we can see this as plain as day. And uh, right now. So what I'm talking about is, I mean, from, from 14 bucks to $1,000, that's a pretty big, huge number. From... $300 to 20,000, it's pretty good, right? Not too bad. But from 5,000, although 5,000 to 67,000, of course, it is a little bit uh, a diminished return from what it is right there. But who knows? I mean, if the people are right and we see that Bitcoin goes to 150, 200,000 in 2025, I don't know, clue. I don't want to get any predictions. I mean, would that be okay if you're buying Bitcoin at 30K? That's the question. So do I think it uh, diminishing returns right now? That's why like Bitcoin's a safe, a safer option for me. Ethereum's a safer option for me. I don't think they're going to hit that uh, merge in August. Sorry, don't. I think it'll be delayed until probably next year, hopefully. But those are the two of the best, the, the safest ones, in my opinion. And then of course, there's other ones that, my other thesis is uh, if you're going to make some gains, you got to do some, I do these degen plays. So I have a second channel for that and I've only done three so far. And the, and the thing that I just built it around one thesis, which is how big is their community that they're bringing into it? If you can find that the community is already built out, you know, millions of people already before they get into crypto, then it's pretty much slam dunk. And you'll know what I'm talking about when you see the channel. Uh, which one has more potential, Algo or ADA? The problem with, with, with Algo is some of their tokenomics are just not the greatest. And then their, their supply is pretty damn high. But so is Cardano. But the thing with, with, with both of those, I mean, 
they've got some pretty big things in Algo lined up. I just read a story today about taking payments, some part in Africa. It's going to be built on Algo as far as the rails. And then also there was a partnership uh, with, I want to say Columbia, not Columbia, um, either Paramount or Columbia, some recording artists that uh, have like uh, Kanye West and um, and Taylor Swift, and they're they're building out in this this old I don't know if you guys remember it's called LimeWire, and uh, they've already that's that's another type of project that already has millions built into it as far as fans. All they do is just the marketing's already there. So with Algo, I think it's pretty good. Now Cardano, every time people start sleeping on Cardano, that's the one where it just kind of roll roar, roars back and says, nope, here we are. And our community is strong and they love us and it's going to keep going up. And then of course, we'll see. I'm hopeful. But that's why I don't hold just Cardano or Algo. I hold them both. <sighs> uh, don't pass on Ada. Yeah. Soccer teams invest in both. <laughs> Divi. So Divi, it's a pretty good project. I met the uh, the founder and CEO in Puerto Rico. Uh, got introduced to him some from some crypto OGs down there, and it's a it's a pretty. I have actually I have Divi on my phone, and it's a text message uh, based. I mean it's a blockchain, but you use most of it in, in uh, text messages. You can send it. It's very simple. It's very easy. It just needs the right breakout and the right uh, fit. And uh, we'll see. But uh, I think they had, they signed a contract with one of the premier soccer leagues uh, in Europe. So we'll see how that one goes. Uh... <laughs> Let's go, Charles. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, I've uh, fallen in love with Ergo. The community is amazing. And the product is beyond impressive. I'd love your thoughts. I'll take a look. Don't really know about it. We're still early. Dimitri says it right. We're still early. How can I be bearish? It's very easy because I think the expectations were high and, they, and we didn't meet those expectations in 2021 for this blow off top. Just didn't. And I think people got like, damn it. So they were looking for the next thing and the next thing. And I think people got caught up in some pretty bad, not bad, yeah, bad projects. And then uh, that was it. And I don't think people really, actually, I can't speak for anybody. I have no idea what happened as far as like what people's thoughts were. I'm, I can just guess. But um, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of issues going on. And I know this is the most unpopular opinion of all time, but it's still the, my opinion. And it's most, <laughs> it's the most unpopular one, but I still say we need a little regulation. Tell me what a security is, what a commodity is, what a currency is, what you define that as, and then we go from there. Also, um, if you want audits for stable coins, I got no problems with that. If you say it's backed up, do your audits. It's fine. Maybe this would, yeah, wouldn't happen, but, but it was an algorithm. It doesn't matter. Uh, tell Demetri to talk to Ben. Healthy tips, how do you maintain? Intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting, creatine, stay active. Cold therapy. Jump in this pool every day. It's like 65 degrees all the time. And then in the winter, it's really cold. And then uh, don't get too caught up like I did today. Man, I really got ticked off. But everybody's... Uh, real estate backed tokens. I don't know if that's a good idea because I mean, how liquid is that? How liquid is real estate? I mean, it's it's backed by it, but we saw what I am with with the, with the algorithm. Like, if you needed the liquidity, how are you going to get it? I don't, I don't like that at all. Yeah, there we go. Too much regulatory uncertainty is the cause. Could be. Could be. Uh. But some uh, people in the space hate regulation because they say there should be no regulation. But I'm I'm tired of not 
not growing up and just saying, you know, like if you're a Bitcoin maxi, you don't need regulation. You're just like, it's Bitcoin. That's it. That's all. And uh, people, but other people would want, because they don't really care. They're like, this is what we use. This is what we know. And, and everything's going to be built on this. So I don't care if it takes 20 to 50 to 100 years. That's cool. And it's great for generational wealth. But it would be nice for it to go up a little bit faster than, than what it is right now. And all, although it does go up just fine. But uh, no, I mean, if we want the... Um, the, the problem is it's a double-edged sword. If we want these institutions to come in, we need regulation. The problem with institutions is manipulation. And when they come in, uh, you see what happens with the uh, commodities and, and precious metals. So just be aware that's what it is. That's why I just, I, I think just buying slowly is uh, better than going all in. Just me. Ah, so here's a great question from Sasha. <clears throat> sweat coin question. How are you planning to deal with USA banned from opting into sweat crypto? So here's the thing. I've been talking about sweat coin for quite some time. Not financial advice, but it's a free app that's been around for four years that you get. It's an app, stick it on your phone, and uh, it just tracks your, your, your steps, like your Fitbit, but it's on your phone. And uh, for every like thousand steps, you get a sweat coin. And what can you do with that? We can go to their little marketplace because they teamed up with like Apple and some other big, big companies. And you can buy little, you know, little things. Not like, I mean, you can't like buy a house, but you know what I mean? So what they're doing is they've already been around for years. They have 65 million users. And then uh, they're going to switch over to uh, move to earn crypto called Sweat Token. And that's going to come out, I think, Q3. And um, the great thing is if you don't live in the United States, or China, whatever you, whatever sweat tokens that you have in your phone. Like I've got like, I got a bunch. Let me show you something. Da, 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 da. Uh, hold on real quick. Quick. Cancel. File. Do, 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 do. I won't do it. Sorry. So I was going to show you my phone, but I can't get the thing pulled up. Anyhow, um, if you're outside the United States, you can, you will, every sweat token that you have, like I have like 2000 sweat coins, right? It's going to give me for the sweat, like it's like a rewards token. They're going to give me a sweat coin or a sweat token, whatever else it is in crypto. And it's going to be a one-to-one -one swap. It's going to be the biggest, and it is, it's going to be the biggest token generation event or TGE in crypto history. The problem is Gary Gensler, protect me harder, is, uh, you know, it, they don't want to deal with America and their security laws. So they say, okay, fine. See, no regular, there's, there's no certainty. So they're like, it's, it's ambiguous. We don't want to deal with it. And, you know, he may think it is, but no one has said it is. And we don't want to, that's why we need certainty, I think. So we're going to just bypass China in America and some other countries who are on the sanctions list. Sucks. So how am I going to get around that? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep walking because I keep getting these tokens, which is fun. And uh, I'm just going to keep it around until they do approve it in America and then uh, go from there. So that's what I got. If you want to do it another way, if you have family, actually, no, you can't even do that. Because I would say if you have family outside of the outside of the country, you could do it, but it's based on your geo location. So sorry, that's it. But uh, I did have a did have like a little little uh, competition going. You can download that that uh, that Sweatcoin app. Links in the description, and uh, you can try to beat me, which you probably won't, but uh, you can give it a shot. And if you beat me. The top three people who do beat me, I'll do a portfolio review for them live on the, the show. And that'll that'll start in June. I'll tell you all about it later. Oh. So, hey, Rob, do you see a point where we get rid of USD, uh, pounds, euros, et cetera, and just use Bitcoin and a digital asset without involving the authorities and governments. I mean, that was the plan in the beginning. 
that was the whole thing. That was the whole reason why, why Bitcoin was created in, in 2000, uh, uh, well, because of the 2008 financial crash. So would I think that it could happen? It could happen. Probably, I don't think it's going to happen in my lifetime. But I mean, look, who knows? Technology moves pretty fast. But I just don't, it's hard to comprehend because it's never, you can't really see it. I mean, I could, I can envision it, but it takes so much, it's just, you know, like, like how would that work as far as fluctuations in prices, as far as like, because there would be no, no manipulation. And of course you have, you know, hundred million Satoshis for, for every one Bitcoin. So there's enough on the planet, but then how would, would we need a pretty great, uh, I mean, light network is great, but as far as like a layer two solution, we can't just use the Bitcoin core layer as a, uh, as transaction. It doesn't work like it is. It can't work like that. It needs a, a layer two, but uh, could it be sure. But uh, who knows? Sure. You're welcome. Yeah. January 4, 2009. Bitcoin Genesis block, the very first one. 74 in steps. Son of a... I was kidding. Let's see. Ha. I, whoops, have not beat you. I have 5,800. Got to start stepping. Okay. Rob, wouldn't you want to swap your altcoins with Bitcoin right now? Bitcoin dominance is pumping. You could. You could swap them all and just put them all into Bitcoin and then let it go up and up and up and then get out of Bitcoin as soon as it is. And that's a, a strategy you can try. i just not going to do it. And of course, when you look at it, you're like, well, it could happen. Yeah, it could. Bitcoin could, the dominance could go up. What are we at? 44, 45% as far as Bitcoin dominance. I think we're... We're looking at uh, going even higher as all the different uh, junk goes out. So I'm just not going to do it because as time goes on, I mean, you can play it. That's the thing. Like you can do this and and be on the and check out charts all day long and take a look at the the uh, the, the the news as far as the macro environment and just judge everything and set your stop loss and all that stuff and just kind of trade around. But then you just say, you know what? I just want to just make it simple, simple for me. Set a, uh, a DCA every week and just go from there. Like, I'll tell you this, Bitcoin Ethereum gets bought every single day. I don't do anything. It's just, it happens in the background with my Voyager app. Uh, how you feeling about Celsius? I'm going to tell you. They had quite a monstrous amount of outflows uh, last month. I want to say it was 1.15 billion. And that wasn't for me. If you look on the Twitter, if you look on their website and also look on their Twitter feed, you'll see it. Like the inflows was, I want to say 30 million. And the outflows was uh, 1.15 billion. So that's not a good start, but I can understand why, because everybody was pretty ticked off at the um, credit investor issue. Don't do that. All right. I think that's it. I'll make sure I... Good question. Christopher, last question. Do you invest in index funds? I don't. I buy... Uh, just for, for equities, stocks, I just buy Amazon because I have an Amazon FBA, so I know the inner workings and and uh, I like how that's is doing so far it's pretty good uh i like mara mara stock i've got uh i actually bought uh, i have tesla but i had that for a while i haven't really added too much of that that's pretty much about it but an index fund which would probably be the safest option i just don't mm. nice okay and lastly lastly rob do you still believe in voyager for the long term do you think there's a lot of benefits with the loyalty program? I still believe in a long term. I mean, it's my f it's my favorite app to use. I know some people say, "Well, I like Crypto.com." All right, uh, I like Coinbase Pro. Sure, I just like Voyagers. To, intuitively, it's very easy for me. So, uh, as far as like the VGX token, it all depends on well a couple of things. That loyalty program, if they can really kick it out and really make it work well, one. 
that debit card. They're rolling that out and it, it has to, hopefully they can get that and the MasterCard and also uh, the ability to trade uh, stocks on their platform, which is weird because they've been working so hard for it. And FTX come out of the gate and says, hey, uh, we already, we already uh, are doing it and we've rolled it out to US customers, a select few, and they're trialing it right now. So I'm like, how did FTX beat you guys the punch? You guys have been doing this for so long. But it is, maybe it'll come out. And then of course, the last thing is uh, they have to expand into Canada and Europe. If they can do all those, all those things, which I had Steve on the show, and he said that should happen before 2023 rolls around, which is uh, we're looking at six more months, I think it should do pretty well. So that's it. So look, that's an hour. So I wanna say thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. So we probably just took a little dip and uh, that is it. So thanks so much for today. I appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Adios.